Hello everyone, in this episode of From Start to Part, I'm going to be talking about how I made these little titanium weapon shafts for Psychotic Break. Even though it's a relatively simple part, working with titanium is always a little bit interesting, so let's take a closer look at the part and then I'll go into how I made it. So here is the actual titanium shaft that I'll be making in this video. Um, it's about one and an eighth inches long. I think actually one and a quarter inches long, half inch diameter. This is um, 6AL4V, which is grade five titanium. And I've got a quarter 20 tapped in each side and it goes completely through, eh, through the whole thing. So there's a hole through the entirety of this, but it's just tapped. Eh, you know, maybe about a quarter inch in, something like that. And I have two of them here. Uh, you do notice that there are two little flats on either side. And the reason for that, uh, this is just a little piece that I machined to simulate the inside of the frame. There's a little divot where the thrust bearing or the thrust washer sits. And then this will actually key in just like that. And then the weapon rides on the shaft like that. And the reason that I do this um, has a couple different reasons. If this key isn't there, when I try and tighten it from the backside, it could just end up spinning and that might be kind of annoying. But the other reason is from side hits into the side, I'm not 100% relying on the sheer strength of the screw that's holding it into the frame. I'm actually relying on the strength of the frame as well. So then any kind of lateral forces coming in this way will actually be pressing against the side of the frame. Whereas if I had just kind of bolted in like that, it would just be the sheer force of the screw. So um, yeah, let's um, start talking about how these were made. I get all of my titanium stock from a seller on eBay called Sack and Metals. And if you look down in the description, I have a link to that. I'm not like plugging them or anything. This video isn't sponsored by them in any way. I just, I've always just bought my titanium from them and they have a lot of good selection, at least for what I use. And so the first step of this was just to put on the bandsaw, cut it down to size. I cut it down a little bit oversized and then I'll you know, go ahead and clean this all up on the mill later. But I think I did you know, something like an eighth or a quarter inch oversized cuts on the bandsaw. Once I get each piece cut down to size on the bandsaw, I bring it over to the Tormach and I use these little miniature um, V-blocks to mount it into the vise. It mounts vertically and I make sure that I'm not touching the bottom. Um, you kind of want to elevate a little bit so that the, um, I guess the shaft section of it is straight up and down vertically. So you don't want it resting on anything else. You just kind of want it floating in the middle of the jaws. And then I'll just go ahead and surface that off. And you know, really it doesn't matter too much what this facing operation looks like. We just need to kind of make sure it's flat. Cutting the key pattern into the top is pretty easy after everything is faced off and you find the center. It's only about a sixteenth of an inch deep, so it is really a pretty easy operation to do and it goes pretty quickly. Drilling titanium is definitely up there on my list of things that I do not enjoy. Drilling titanium is just really annoying. I, maybe I just don't know the feeds and speeds and don't know how to do it properly. Machining it's just fine. I've never really had an issue machining titanium, but drilling it is just a pain. Um, it seems to be very springy, so when you get a twist drill in there, it kind of seems to compress and twist the actual drill too. So I got a lot of stalling, a lot of issues, and it likes to be drilled at a very low RPM. And I was extremely lazy when I was doing this. I didn't switch the Tormach over to the low speed gearing. So basically the mill goes anywhere from, I think like 2000 RPM up to 10,000 RPM with this pulley set. And it's meant to really run at like 10,000 RPM. That's where most of your power is. But I was running it really low. I was running at like 2,500 RPM. So it had very, very little torque. So that was just kind of my issue. I really should have just switched the pulleys to the other one, which tops out at like, I think 2,500. 
I really should have used that. I would have had a lot more torque, but you know, I was just really being lazy. So I ended up spending more time doing the drilling. I just should have, you know, switched the pulleys over. Okay, after I get the holes all drilled, I get the top faced off, I get the little keys in there, it is time to do the tapping. If you've ever tried tapping titanium by hand, you know it can be a very frustrating and difficult process. I've never really been successful doing deep blind taps in titanium. It's just very springy and when you put the tap in there, it doesn't really cut as much as it just kind of bends inside. It's a really terrible process, no matter how much oil you use, everything. So I just opt to thread mill. Thankfully, the Tormach and Path Pilot are really good at thread milling. Um, I might do a separate video just to kind of show you how easy it is, but it has this um, little tutorial or program inside to where you can just say where you want the, screw, the um, hole to be, where you want the threads to be, what type of threads they are, how big you want them, and you just basically press a button and this beautiful little thread mill just goes in and cuts out the actual threads. If you're not familiar with what thread milling is, it's just this little bit, as you're seeing right here, that has these little um, triangular teeth on it that are the same geometry as the threads that you're putting into your part. And it simply just goes around, spirals down into the parts at the right thread pitch, and just basically machines out the threads. And the beauty of this is you can actually adjust the thread. So if you want more of a tight thread, or if you want maybe a more loose thread, you can kind of adjust those parameters, and it makes putting threads into titanium actually really easy. I went really slow with the thread milling on this part because, well, I'm a wimp, and thread mills are really tiny and they're very expensive. I think this thread mill is like 50 bucks and the last thing I want to do is make a mistake and snap it and then, oh, I gotta wait for another one to come in the mail and waste another 50 bucks or something. So I'm just going really conservative and I think I did like five passes on this. And then I kind of go back and check the screw, check the threads, make sure everything looks good and then just kind of open it up a little bit more and just make sure the threads are the right size. So now that one side is all faced off, threaded, drilled, and keyed, and all that good stuff, we need to flip it over and do the other side. But we can't just rely strictly on the V-jaws because we want the top keys and the bottom keys to be perfectly parallel. They're going to be parallel on the frame, so we don't want one to be like that and one to be like that. We want them perfectly lined up. So all I did is use a parallel underneath the bottom that fit into that key, and I pressed against that so it couldn't really rotate, and that allowed me to have everything parallel. And they didn't get a good video of this because it's kind of tight in there, but here's what it looks looks like in picture form. You can see that there's just a little parallel tucked down there and it's riding along that and that allowed that key face to be parallel with the jaws and then so I could do everything and know that the top and bottom would be parallel. So I think that's all I have for this video. Uh, this is one more part off the checklist for psychotic break. It's a relatively simple part, but at the same time it has a couple little complexities. Uh, maybe in the future video I will talk a little bit about thread milling in Pathpilot because once you kind of learn it, there's a little couple tips and tricks that you have to know. But once you learn it and figure out how to use it, it is really the way to do all threaded holes if the part is already gonna be on there and definitely in titanium or hardened metals is just not an issue. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, be sure to check out more updates for Psychotic Break. I have a few more videos to do before I am done with the project. I'm looking over there because my workbench is just completely covered in parts. I'm almost there, almost in the home stretch, so be sure to check out the latest videos on that. Check out the links below, check out the rest of this project, and thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.